This car is a fuel that's made out of nothing but water and air. The entire car industry is about to fall apart as an efficient and daily usable water-powered engine was finally developed, which threatens both EVs and fossil fuel engines as it tends to completely eliminate the huge levels of pollution the vehicles produce. Join us and let's take a look at the recently discovered water engine and a few reasons why it will destroy the entire car industry. First of all, let's take a look at the key reasons why hasn't this been done in the past. The car industry has been pursuing the development of water-powered engines for quite some time now, usually to no avail, as every single previous attempt was either a complete disaster and failure, or simply was not efficient enough for any practical use. There were some promising projects, however, they've mostly been abandoned for various reasons, but more on that later. The closest thing that we got to real water-powered engines that have actually been moved from the prototype phase have been fuel cell vehicles and hydrogen-powered combustion engines. However, both of these options are still inferior to EVs and regular internal combustion engines as the technology is still fairly rudimentary and inefficient in the long run. However, we're finally at the dawn of water-powered engines, as a couple of years ago, there was a man that came up with a fairly functional prototype of it. Let's meet the inventor of the water-powered engine, Oladin Kasemi, who's a scientist from Iran, has been credited as the inventor of this all-new engine. Kasemi has been working hard on finding an alternative to fossil fuels, and his efforts have recently given birth to one of the biggest steps for the entirety of the car industry. Kasemi, who's based in Garech, which is a city west of Tehran, claims to have converted a locally produced Peugeot 405 from gasoline power to a water-powered vehicle. He's also stated that the engine founded in the converted 405 is highly efficient, reliable, and simple, which makes sense because he developed it from scratch in his spare time. Let's take a look at how this engine actually functions. According to Kasimi, the power is actually generated when water or H2O gets separated into hydrogen and oxygen, creating a chemical reaction in the process. That's actually the energy that's required to power the car. It functions similarly to a hydrogen combustion engine that can be found in the BMW Hydrogen 7, except that it doesn't use a highly flammable compressed gas as its propellant. The hydrogen fuel cell works in the form of electrolysis. The H2O molecules split into hydrogen and oxygen once the voltage is applied to the electrodes that are located in the tank. This system is often referred to as an HHO generator, and it should at least in theory function absolutely flawlessly. The tank itself has a capacity of 60 liters. It's located in place of the rear seats. In the video that has been released to the public, we can see Kasemi filling the fuel tank with distilled water, which he even drank at one point to show that it's not from any form of regular fossil fuel. It's been stated that when driven economically, the car can cover distances of over 900 kilometers at the speed of 90 kilometers per hour. That means that the car consumes around 6 liters of water over 100 kilometers, making it extremely economical so pit stops will be few and far in between, making it more convenient than electric vehicles, especially on longer distances. This is obviously not the only benefit that comes from using water as an energy source, so let's take a look at the other significant benefits of using water. The benefits powered engines, first of all, let's compare the water powered engine to its fossil fuel counterparts. Water is actually more potent than regular gasoline as a fuel source. A liter of water can generate up to 96 megajoules of energy, whereas a liter of gasoline produces only 29 megajoules, which is almost four times less. Now that doesn't mean we'll all be driving hypercars that utilize 1.6L bangers. However, the cars will surely have enough power to perform the needs of most people. Furthermore, Internal combustion engines produce all kinds of toxic emissions, the most notable of which is the extreme amounts of carbon dioxide, whereas the water-powered engine that has been developed by Kissimmee produces only water vapor, which causes next to zero air pollution and makes water-powered engine the blessing that we've all been waiting for. Finally, Utilizing water as a way of fueling the car is simply much better from a pragmatic standpoint, as water is considerably cheaper than gasoline or diesel. Sure, distilled water is significantly more expensive than regular tap water, however, it still weighs less than regular fuel, making the car as economical as an EV. Oh, and speaking of EVs, water-powered engines provide a much higher level of convenience, as you can fill it up virtually anywhere, and, as we've already mentioned, 
in a much shorter period. Plus, let's not forget about the fact that EVs are highly complex and sophisticated machines, meaning that maintaining and fixing them can only be done by people, people that are highly skilled and knowledgeable, and that tends to cost money, a lot of money. Seriously, replacing a battery on a baseline Tesla Model 3 costs almost a third of the entire car. Compare that with a mechanical assembly that's much simpler and easier to work on, and you'll easily see the key benefits of the utilization of water engines in day-to-day -day usage. Oh, and not to mention that they're also greener for the environment, and they're in no way, shape, or form dependent on the electric grid, which, as we all know, mostly uses fossil fuels to produce electric energy. And also, electric vehicles are just too expensive for any utilitarian use, as most of them are still considered to be luxury cars by the price tag alone. And don't get us started on the benefits of water engines over hydrogen and FCEVs. First of all, you don't need the hydrogen to be pre-separated from oxygen, making the entire process both significantly cheaper and convenient on a global scale. Second of all, you're not sitting on a literal napalm bomb that could go off at any moment. Hydrogen is a highly corrosive gas, and it's also extremely hard to contain, meaning that the tanks will need to be both armored and they'll also need constant inspection, as leaking hydrogen is much more dangerous than leaking gasoline or water. So since there are so many benefits that arise from using water engines, you must be asking yourself, when will we see the widespread adoption of this revolutionary water engine? And that's exactly where we find ourselves in a bit of a conundrum, as even though this invention is extremely impressive, it's technically not the first of its kind. Water-powered engines that are similar in design have been made in the past. However, for some reason, they keep getting no funding at all and are completely overlooked by the industry, especially if they've been made by a small company or an individual and not an automotive giant like Toyota or BMW. Seriously, even though there were water-powered engines that were built in literal sheds, no major manufacturer ever came out with a semi-functional version, let alone a proper vehicle that can be daily driven and that utilizes water as a power source, which is puzzling to say the least. Well, the missing piece to this puzzle might actually be found in the past, so let's travel back to 1998 for a second and take a look at the first properly functioning water-powered car. This car was, similarly to Kissimmee's own 405, actually made in fairly rudimentary conditions. It was developed in the late 1990s, and it was a one-off prototype buggy that was fitted with a water-powered engine. The buggy was designed and developed by Stanley Allen Meyer, who on numerous occasions stated that both car and oil companies threatened him and tried to pressure him into destroying the vehicle. Meyer even stated that they offered him millions of dollars in exchange for destroying all evidence that the car ever existed, However, Meyer didn't back down, and he was very vocal in his fight against oil companies. Unfortunately, in 1998, Meyer mysteriously passed away from an alleged brain aneurysm. What makes this more sinister is the fact that all this happened during a dinner with his brother and two Belgian businessmen that were interested in his invention. After sipping his cranberry juice, Meyer ran out of the restaurant clutching his throat, and his brother followed him. Meyer told him moments before he died that the two businessmen poisoned him, after which he collapsed and never woke up. To make the story even weirder, shortly after his death, his garage was rummaged by an unidentified assailant, and the car he developed alongside most of the schematics and tools was all stolen, never to be seen again. We're not saying that the oil companies were after him, as we don't know if Meyer's pre-mortem allegations were true or not. Meyer and his brother might as well have been chasing publicity with these allegations by turning themselves into martyrs. However, we must admit that the conditions that surround his passing are very strange, to say the least. Other people developed engines similar to Kasemi's and Meyer's, such as the Pakistani scientist named Aga Wakar Ahmed. Ahmed's invention was also running on distilled water, and many people state that the car itself was fully functional. However, he was shut down by none other than Ataur Rahman, Pakistan's former Minister of Science and Technology. He dismissed the project altogether, stating that such inventions simply can't be made to function, and even if someone did make a functional water engine, they would violate the laws of conservation of energy. Kasemi's invention seemingly wrestles with the same problems. 
There have been no significant updates on the process of development for more than a few years now, which is extremely sad to hear. So, as much as we'd love to see a water engine come alive as something more than just a mere concept, the automotive industry, for one reason or another, keeps delaying and ignoring the development of such engines and vehicles, as we believe that until a serious car manufacturer steps out and backs up the development of water engines, we're sure to miss out on the great benefits that would be granted to use with it. Let's just hope that Kissimmee and his water-powered Peugeot 405 suffer a better fate than Stanley Allen Meyer. We'll avoid both Belgian businessmen and cranberry juice for quite some time if we were in his place.